if you were to pick the top three most promising treatments of Parkinson's over the next 10 years, what would they be? So I would I would split it between um, people that have a genetically defined subtype of Parkinson's disease. And if, if we can develop a LARC2 inhibitor, and there are trials in patients with LARC2 mutations of using a LARC2 inhibitor, then we, we, we can be cautiously optimistic that, that this group of patients may well um, benefit because of a precise targeted therapeutic intervention. Likewise, patients with a GBA1 mutation, there are ways of boosting um, the, the GBA1 enzyme function either through a, a, a tablet that acts as a chaperone or even through a gene therapy approach to, to trying to, to boost GK's function. So those types of targeted approach, we have to be optimistic, may well deal with this, this subtype of Parkinson's at source. But on the other hand, we want um, drugs that, that can help the, the broader population of patients. And drugs like exenatide may have an anti-inflammatory effect, may boost insulin sensitivity um, within cells, and that, that may be relevant to a broader population of patients. Proteins which um, influence alpha-synuclein aggregation, so immune therapies, so using antibodies to, to, to stop um, the spread of aggregating forms of alpha-synuclein from one certain nerve cell to the next, those may still um, turn out to be useful therapies, and there are ongoing trials in that. Or there are other Im inflammatory approaches, you know, looking at the, the inflammasome, which, which is, is recently been recognized as, as, a, as, the, as the cause for the inflammatory process in Parkinson's disease. So as, as we learn more about the, these processes, which are relevant to the subgroups, also relevant, you know, perhaps also are relevant to the broader population, then, then we have this two-pronged approach, which, which could really influence the, our, our chances of success in finding disease-modifying approaches. So it's preferable to find disease-modifying approaches that actually slow or stop or maybe even reverse the aggression of Parkinson's. But what's, what's your view on other strategies about, for example, cell replacement or, or other ways of actually just um, managing the symptom? So, you know, using dopamine replacement, you know, cell replacement strategies may, may have a huge impact on the quality of life of a person with Parkinson's. So if, if the, the trials show that the, the, the cells survive, they produce dopamine and, and that they um, are safe and tolerated and you know, are effective, then using a, a dopamine cell replacement strategy could be applied early on. So you know, soon after diagnosis, as soon as someone is you know, in need of levodopa, rather than having you know, 10 to 20 years worth of tablets to take, they could have a, a brain procedure have dopamine cells implanted and, and that could replace the dopamine that they're missing for, for the next 20 years. And, and that will have a huge impact on, on their quality of life and, and the, the, the stigma associated with Parkinson's and, and relieve that pill burden. But of course, it may not do anything to stop the, the progression of the disease in the longer term. People may develop the same balance problems, memory and thinking problems that, that don't respond to dopamine later on, even if they've had a, a, a dopamine cell replacement strategy. So it, it's not that the, the approaches are going to cure patients with Parkinson's disease, but nevertheless, they may do an enormous amount to, to help control symptoms in a simple and effective long-term way. So it sounds very promising from a research perspective. There's lots of different strategies and lots of different trials and so um, we always say this, that it's, it's five or 10 years away from finding a new therapy, but it really feels like it's that, that we're getting close now. Yeah, we'll, we'll have data from our phase three exenatide trial in February 2024. Um, so once that, that data has been cleaned, we'll, we'll try and get the results you know, out for, for um, general consumption as soon as possible. And if they're positives, we'll, we'll shout from the rooftops about it. Um, we're hopeful we'll have our... Our platform trial, our ACT-PD platform trial set up in, in 2024 as well. So we'll be testing more drugs and, and getting them um, either um, you know, shown to be ineffective so we, they can be replaced. Or if we find that they're effective, that then we'll have phase three data quickly um, to, 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 to use for regulatory submission. And of course, all the, the, the cell therapy, the gene therapy approaches, the, these um, trials of LARC2 inhibitors, you know, all of these are ongoing and, and will be reported in, in the next few years. So, so we can be optimistic. Brilliant. Thank you. So I have loads more questions, but I think we're out of time. So um, 
So thank you very much. If you're interested in finding out more about Parkinson's, subscribe for a new video every Thursday.